Welcome to uh, Embedded World. Welcome to Risk Five. Welcome to people. Um, <laughs> it's good to see people face to face. So uh, thank you very much for uh, for coming to Embedded World. Thank you very much for coming to Risk Five here. So at, at Risk Five, uh, you know, we have a community here. This is the Risk Five International booth, and there are I don't know 12, 14 different companies that are represented here. Uh, I get the, uh, the honor and the glory of going first today. Uh, my name is Larry Lapidus. I'm with Empiris Software. And uh, I'm going to be talking about RISC-V processor verification methodology. So today I want to uh, explain a little bit about uh, Empiris, a little bit about RISC-V, why people are uh, choosing RISC-V. Uh, processor DV issues, uh, levels of DV methodology, and then key technologies. So let's start with, uh, with Empiris. So our, uh, our founding team has a background in EDA tools and also FPGA design and processor IP companies. We saw the need for tools and methodologies similar to EDA, uh, but on the software side. Uh, but then five years ago, we saw the RISC-V, um, uh, the RISC-V technology, the instruction set, transitioning from an academic exercise into an industrial community. And uh, so because we had been building processor models for other ISAs, the transition to, uh, to RISC-V actually was a pretty natural move for Empiris. So while design verification was not our first thought in RISC-V, customers have dragged us into this. Customers have said, we need DV for RISC-V. So uh, this is, there's a lot going on here. Uh, I, I won't talk through this, but as I said, five years ago, five and a half years ago, now we saw this transition from academic uh, community, uh, from academic exercise to real industry. And since then, we've been building models, doing IP, helping our customers to tape out chips and get their software going. And it's been a pretty steady stream of accomplishments, and this is uh, just a small slice of that. We work with, uh, with a number of the customers and uh, partners in the, in the community here. Uh, to be clear, we're not producing a RISC-V core ourselves. We're producing tools for software development, tools for design verification. So here we can uh, see a number of different uh, users, some companies that you might recognize, like uh, NVIDIA Networking uh, as an example, but there are a lot uh, going through here, as well as on the uh, partner side. and then. There are also numerous universities around the world, and we actually give away some of our uh, tools, and we don't actually keep track of that, but there's probably, on any given day, another 30 uh, users that, uh, that are using our instruction set simulator, simulator as a reference model. So why RISC-V? RISC-V started in the university, uh, University of California, Berkeley, uh, 12 years ago, uh, and RISC-V is provided uh, as an open source license. That's a pretty cool thing. But this is just the architecture. It's not the implementation. Uh, the other thing about uh, RISC-V is that it is not an academic uh, architecture. A lot of academic architectures are built just to explain concepts to students. This was built to actually be, be used. Um, and so while the uh, while the ISA is a comprehensive RISC-V architecture, the specification actually allows for custom features. What that does, what that custom feature thing does is provides freedom for people to create domain-specific processors. And so actually, while it's open source and free, it's really the freedom of being able to design something in that's the key thing about RISC-V. So uh, make versus buy. Actually, around here, we have, uh, sorry, I haven't counted, but we've got a number of different uh, processor IP vendors that you can actually buy a RISC-V uh, core from. Uh, but for various reasons, you may want to uh, make your own. There are good reasons to do one or the other. In talking about verification today, of course, I'm talking about building your own, because the, the vendors like uh, Sci-5, like Andy's, uh, Codasip are going to do uh, DV of their own cores. You're going to buy something 
that's fully verified, fully qualified from them. But there are reasons to go and make your own, uh, build a fully custom processor. So talking about uh, DV here, there are a number of, of challenges in doing DV. It's an interesting uh, thing because verification is, uh, is a big thing in SOC design. People have been doing verification for a long time. Um, part of that is my fault. I was actually part of the, the verification revolution in uh, EDA 20 plus years ago. Uh, but, but now we have something different uh, with, uh, with ARM and with x86. All that DV work has been internal and proprietary, and you haven't had to work uh, at it. You just plug that in to your chip, and the DV is everything else in the SOC. But now you have to do DV of the processor, and it's quite different. And so uh, we, we have some challenges here. Um, every addition is going to dramatically compound the verification uh, complexity, uh, and, and these costs, uh, you've got schedule, you've got resources, You've got quality. Uh, you really need to have comprehensive verification. And the, and the cost of, uh, of DV is, is pretty high, so you need to be efficient at this. Prior to Empiris, uh, at the RISC-V Summit last year, uh, there was no off-the-shelf toolkit or products available for DV. There's no EDA vendor that has a RISC-V CPU DV kit. But that's what we introduced uh, at, the, at the summit last year. So let's talk about DV methodology uh, for a bit. There are a number of levels of DV methodology, starting with just getting a hello world uh, up and running and some self-checking uh, test. Uh, maybe the most common thing in verification is to do a uh, post-simulation trace compare but actually the most comprehensive is doing an asynchronous co-simulation step and compare. So let me talk about those, uh, those two methodologies uh, specifically. So this is uh, post-simulation trace log file compare. And basically all we're doing is uh, running the, the same tests through both the, the RTL, uh, the implementation, and the reference model and then at the end doing a comparison. So it's a pretty simple uh, process. There's a random instruction stream generator that allows you to uh, generate tests to uh, go ahead and exercise the processor, uh, and then you do the comparison. The uh, reference model is the Empiris uh, ISS, and you can see the uh, RISC-V OVP SIM Plus. Uh, this is something that we offer for free. There's a uh, there's a link there. Uh, actually, I believe we're going to be publishing the slides on the RISC-V uh, website, so everybody should have access to this or just come see us afterwards. And then the instruction stream generator that we're using here is actually the uh, Google uh, RISC-V DV instruction stream generator, but there are also other open source, uh, as, as with Google, and commercial instruction stream generators. Co-simulation asynchronous step and compare is actually a more comprehensive way to do DV. It enables uh, doing DV of uh, things like interrupts or uh, multi-heart or out-of-order pipeline, uh, the, the more complex features in, uh, in a processor. So we, we've been working on DV for uh, about three years now. These are a couple of early examples, uh, one with uh, Open Hardware Group. Uh, they're over in the corner there. Uh, and then another one with NVIDIA Networking, the Mellanox team. And you can see just all these boxes, different, uh, different colors, different people working on them, doing different things. And, and it's uh, maybe not a complete hodgepodge or ad hoc environment, but it's not necessarily a uh, cohesive environment. Uh, but, it, but actually, we learned a lot from doing these things and working with uh, with these people, and we still work with them uh, for that matter. Uh, but now, what, what this has evolved to is something a little bit simpler. And now, as, as I said, Empiris introduced this Empiris DV product, which includes reference model, but also includes this verification IP that helps you with your DV process. So the reference model is needed for a comparison of the correct behavior. 
The verification IP provides ease of use, it saves time, it saves resources. And then we've also, together with Open Hardware, developed this RVVI standard to provide easy communication between the device under test and the uh, reference model. The reference model is a uh, key piece here. Uh, Empiris uh, builds reference model with a simulator to run it. Um, this reference model supports the full RISC-V specification, uh, plus things, it includes everything that's ratified, plus other specs that are stable. There are actually more than 250 different parameters for configuring uh, this base model. But if this base model plus the parameters aren't enough because you're doing something custom, we actually have a well-established methodology for adding an extension library with the custom features built into this. So this methodology for building processor models, we actually developed over 12, 13, 14 different instruction set architectures before we got to RISC-V. So this is a well-established technology uh, that's being used now in the RISC-V community. And as I said, you know, we, we provide uh, for free an instruction set simulator, but we also have the Empiris DV product with the verification IP and the reference model uh, built in. And that, that verification IP includes tools to help you configure, tools for synchronization, because if you're doing something uh, running in, in a step and compare mode with the device under test, and uh, you've got an interrupt, you've got something asynchronous uh, happening, you need to synchronize what the RTL is doing with what the reference model needs to do. And so that's what the synchronization bit is for, the scoreboarding for uh, comparison, a pass-fail determination. And then we've also got instruction coverage built into this so that you can make sure you've got coverage on the full set of instructions that you're testing. So there's quite a bit that's, uh, that's in there. This can be used in uh, C or C++ or System Verilog uh, test benches. So it's actually quite flexible. And with that RVVI uh, interface, there are standards that say this is what we need to do to connect the device under test to this reference model subsystem. So in summary, uh, the RISC-V processor developers need to do comprehensive verification of the RTL implementation. The processor DV methodology has been in, evolved by uh, Empiris, working together with all those partners that I showed. Uh, the asynchronous co-simulation step and compare methodology provides the most comprehensive, the most efficient RISC-V DV flow. And the key technologies are the Empiris Open Virtual Platforms reference model and the Empiris DV verification IP. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer questions. And the Empiris stand is over on that side of the booth. But if you do have any questions, 